Sometimes you need to get some data out of a web page. Now there's many reasons why. Maybe you're building a web application and you need some data for your app. So you find the data on the internet, but it's formatted for displaying and you want that in something more machine readable like JSON. Maybe you're doing lead generation or data mining or something like that and you want to scrape a large number of web pages and pull all that data out and put it into one place. Well, there's lots of ways you can do web scraping and today we're going to look at how you do it directly in the browser with JavaScript. In this video, we're going to be interacting with the DOM. So if you're not familiar with the document object model, then first check out last week's video up here so that you have a bit more context about some of the code that we're going to be writing today. First, let's get a web page to scrape the data from. In today's example, I'm going to be using this Wikipedia page called List of Largest Cities. This is a Wikipedia article with some context up here about the biggest cities in the world. And if you scroll down a bit, We've got a table down here with the largest cities in the world by population. Now this will be an HTML table in the DOM. So let's say that we want to extract the name and the city from that data and pull those two fields out for every city in this list and put them into a JSON file. Now that's why it's called web scraping because you're scraping off this information from the page and extracting it into another format. Now we're going to be writing our JavaScripts directly in the dev tools in the console so we can play around with the DOM until we get the data that we want. And again, remember to watch my DOM video if any of this is unfamiliar to you now. Right, now the first thing we need to do is locate the parent element of the table that we want to scrape. Now if we right click this table tag and just do what was it? store as global variable. What that will do is it will give us this temp1 variable that's going to be a reference to the table tag in the DOM. If I can do temp1 here, you can see it will show me that's the table. So what we'll do is we'll put that into a constant called table for ease of use and make it a bit more explanatory. Cool. The next thing we need to do is um, extract these rows from the table. So if you look at the table element in the DOM here, it's got a T head and then it's got T body and the rows will be inside the T body element down here. So there's all these individual row objects inside the DOM. So the way we do that is we'll create a constant called rows and we'll say that is table.getElementsByTagName. And the tag name will be TR. So we're looking for all the table row elements inside there. And if we just interrogate that rows variable, you can see that that is an HTML collection with 84 rows. Now, the top three rows in here are actually blank. You can see it's, uh, it's these header rows. So we've got city and we've got this blank row down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove or slice off those first three rows. So if I say constant and data, and then I can use a spread operator on rows to turn it into an array. And then I'm going to use the slice command to slice off the first three elements of array and just to return everything after the first three. So if we do that and then do data, we should see that data is our list of rows starting from Tokyo. So down here you can see I've got Tokyo is the zeroth row or the first row and then Delhi, Shanghai, like that. So what we've got now is an array of table row DOM elements. The next thing we need to do is we need to get the first row header and then we can start to get the elements inside that first row. So if I go um, first row header, So you can see here, we've taken the first table header element from that first row and we've printed out the value on it, which is Tokyo. So we know we've managed to find the city name string by looking at the first row header. So that's going to tell us how we can get a city name out of a TR element. What we need to do now is create a loop, go through every table row and do what I've just done here. So get the table row element, get the table header element and get the inner HTML out of it. And we'll be able to map that into a JSON object. So let's uh, start by creating a result object. And then I'm going to do data.map. And for each row inside here, 
we can get the city the way we've just done it. So that'll be row dot get elements by tag name. So that will give us a city and then we can get the population number, which will be the second table cell along. So we'll do that the same way. And this time we're going to look for a TD, which is like a table cell. And that should give us a city and the population for each element inside the rows array. And then we can return that as a new JSON object. And this is what we want from our scraping, basically. We want a new JSON object. So we'll return city and population. And that should give us, inside this result, it should give us an array of cities and populations. Here. So that's basically the web scraping. We've got some code that will go through and it will pull out cities and populations from a bunch of table elements inside the DOM. Okay, let's just have a quick summary of what we've done there. So the first thing we did is we found the table element. Um, and remember, the DOM is like a tree. So when we've got, once we've got the table element, that lets us find all of the children underneath it. We're doing that by calling this get elements by tag name with a tag name of TR. So that will return an array of rows inside the table and TR is short for table row. Now we've figured out from inspecting the DOM that the first three rows of this table were various headings and things and they weren't very useful. So we've used a slice method here to trim off the first three elements of that array. Lastly is this bit complicated looking mapping function. This function maps the data rows into JavaScript objects. For each row, it goes and gets the th element, so that's the header cell, um, and it finds the inner text inside that, which will be the name of the city. Now we get all of the td cell elements next, and we skip directly to the cell at index one, so that's the second cell, and we get the text inside that. The text inside the second cell is the population figure, and remember, we can check all of this by using the elements tab in DevTools. We return a JavaScript object from this map, and that was, ends up with a results array, which is the data that we wanted to scrape. You can turn this into JSON directly from DevTools by right-clicking in the console and choosing Copy Object, and then pasting that into a text editor like VS Code. So far, everything we've been doing has just been in the JavaScript console in DevTools. But what if we wanted to save this and use it again at some point in the future? So maybe you want to go back and re-scrape this page another time to see if the data's changed, or maybe you want to use this as part of a bigger web scraping script that will go off and load in multiple Wikipedia articles and scrape lots of pages in a row. Well, we can do that by creating a JavaScript file and adding our code into that JavaScript file. The only thing we won't be able to carry over is that first part where we found the table. If you remember, we got a reference to the table by right-clicking it in DevTools and choose, choosing store as global variable. Well, if we want to make our script reusable, we can't do that, so we'll have to locate the table element in code. Now, there's lots of ways you can locate an element inside the DOM. I'm just gonna do it here by looking for this class name here called WikiTable, and that's just something that I found on the page on Wikipedia, so that was um, put there by the Wikipedia developers. And then we have all this code packaged up nicely into this function. We can prove this works by loading up the Wikipedia page afresh, um, opening up the console and just pasting this function into it here. And then if we call the function, you can see the result is our array of city objects from the page. If you were using this for scraping lots of web pages, like for data mining or for lead generation, then you could take advantage of a headless browser such as Puppeteer Headless browsers work by loading in web pages and allowing you to execute JavaScript without trying to create the actual user interface. So something like Puppeteer, you'll be able to automate this whole process of loading in a web page, inserting that scraping function and executing it to get the results that you've seen here. In this video, we've seen how you can use JavaScript DOM manipulation to pull data out of a web page and save it as JSON. Web scraping like this is possible in many different languages, but what I like about JavaScript is that it lets you play around with the DOM in DevTools as you're writing the code. 
So this was a little bit trial and error, and unlike web scrapers written in Python, for example, you can test your script immediately just as you're writing it on the actual web page that you're trying to scrape. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. The video is part of a series on practical coding skills for building real world web applications. And so to be notified when I upload more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. I upload videos at least once every week, so this series will only grow and grow for the foreseeable future. Anyway, that's all for me today. So why not check out the other videos here on the Train to Code YouTube channel and have fun pulling data from web pages using JavaScript. Yeah.